Hi, I'm Wesley Ferreira, clarinet professor at Colorado State University. And today I'm going to discuss ways to help you prepare for this year's Colorado Allstate Band and Orchestra Audition. In this video, Rose Etude No. 6 will be our focus. When preparing for an audition, it's important to try to determine what the particular musical selection chosen is meant to highlight. Rose's Etude No. 6 is marked allegro, meaning that it should be performed quickly and with great energy. Coupled with the suggested tempo marking of quarter equals 120 for your Allstate audition, it is clear that this etude is meant to display more of your technical proficiency. This year's required passage of the etude for Allstate auditions is not very long. You were only asked to perform from the beginning until measure 18. This means that if you begin preparing early, you will be able to master many of the challenges contained within it. As with all of your clarinet playing, using good practice techniques will be the key to learning this etude properly and doing your best come audition day. Let's go over some important and basic concepts to keep in mind when preparing for this etude. In recent years, scientific studies have confirmed that the key to a successful performance is for a musician to first learn the piece of music through slow and deliberate practice. It is especially important when learning a technical passage to always play the notes and rhythms accurately and to avoid repeating mistakes. I suggest that you first learn this etude by playing it all slurred. Practice with the metronome set at a slow eighth note subdivision so that you can keep track of your progress as you gradually increase the tempo. For example, you might start practicing as slow as eighth note equals 80. Practice the entire 18 measure passage this way. When you begin to consistently perform all of the notes and rhythms accurately and evenly, you should bump up the tempo on the metronome by a few clicks. Though only increase the tempo to a level that is manageable so you can continue to play well. Be patient with your progress and remember that all along the way, continue to reinforce the good and accurate work that you have been learning and avoid repeating mistakes. Be conscious of your finger movements when playing too. Ideal finger movement for playing the clarinet is for your fingers to be relaxed, and when you're playing relaxed, they naturally curve. Lift all of your fingers from the back knuckle, but be sure to stay close to the keys. Do not lift too high. In Rose's Etude number six, you will begin to encounter real difficulty playing with technical accuracy, and will likely not be able to increase the tempo on the metronome to reach your desired speed if you are lifting your fingers too high. As you begin to reach the point in your practice preparation where you are playing all of the notes and rhythms accurately while playing all slurred, you should now add in the articulation markings. I suggest the point at which you should begin to add in the articulation markings in your practice is once your metronome tempo has moved from our original eighth note equals 80 to eighth note equals 160. At this point, start to feel the music in quarters. Now, instead of practicing at eighth note equals 160, put the metronome at 80 so that you are practicing quarter note equals 80. For some of you, once you add in the varied articulation markings that are written on the page, you might find that you are no longer able to play the notes and rhythms accurately at the faster tempo that you'd been practicing at all slurred. Not to worry. Simply decrease the metronome tempo to a level that you can play it well evenly and accurately, and start the process of working it up again with the metronome, a few clicks at a time. Be sure that you are using air to blow through the articulated notes. Using good air support will make a huge difference in whether a technical passage feels easy or difficult to play. Here's an example. First of me performing the opening two measures without good air support, and second, where I keep the air moving and play with no hesitation through the notes. The 
This etude does present a few specific issues and pitfalls that I would like to address. First, there are a few tricky fingerings, and the passage in measure five and six may pose the biggest challenge. I suggest that you use the side F sharp in measure six, so that your movement from F sharp to E sharp back to F sharp looks like this. It's important to practice these two measures, measures five and six, with a technique that I call finger first. I'll demonstrate. First, practice articulating the first note in measure five. It's an F sharp. You'll notice that in order to make this note sound, you need to remove your tongue away from the reed and then place it back on. Next, while your tongue is on the reed after having played the bottom note, the F sharp, quickly play the fingering for the next note, the C natural. Once you have the fingering for the C natural in place, you remove your tongue from the reed and make this top note, that C, sound. What we're doing here is using the finger first technique to train your fingers to move quickly and automatically between these two notes. The automatic finger first connection is perhaps the most important aspect to practice in this passage and it can be employed in various parts of the entire etude. Here's a demonstration now of measures five and six, including my use of the side keys to play F sharp in measure six. I'll play the passage slowly with pauses to demonstrate the finger first technique. I left a rather large gap in sound between the leap notes in my example. And as you practice, gradually work to narrow the gap so that you are playing straight through. However, always maintain that feeling of moving your fingers first before your tongue releases from the reed and allows the following note to sound. Looking at measure five and six highlighted here, you can isolate any part of these two measures. It doesn't have to be played straight through as in my example that I played. In fact, I expect many of you will want to isolate and work on the connection between notes, especially in the first beat of measure six. Another pitfall in these two measures is found on beat two of measure five. Take a look. It's important not to wiggle your fingers and wrist too much between the throat A to G sharp back to A. If you were to wiggle your fingers and wrist too much as so, You'll likely find that when you try to increase the tempo, that there will be too much movement to allow you to play quickly at your desired speed. Keep your wrist movement to a minimum. I teach all of my students to play the throat A in the natural curve position, and then your G sharp should be played with the middle knuckle while you keep your finger more straight like so. The movement in measure five then would appear like this, back and forth. There may be a slight movement of the wrist, but as you can see, it's pretty efficient. There are many leaps over the break in this etude, and I have found that a common issue with developing clarinetists is that they tend to squeeze their throats and tense up and even bite on the mouthpiece when they're playing between two notes over the break. This habit stems from our early years, when some of us first learned to get the notes over the break to sound by squeezing them out. This habit often continues as you progress, and it gets in the way of playing anything technical. I'm going to show you a technique that I have my students work on to help them combat this bad habit. I call it playing down the twelfth. It requires that you play any passage in which you notice that you were using tension over the break and play it down the twelfth. This means that while you finger the notes that you see on the page, you do not press the register key you allow those notes on the page that would normally sound in the clarion register to now sound down the twelfth in the Shaloma register. I'll demonstrate by playing measures 12 to 15. <laughs> Instinctively, 
you will know that in order to allow for a smooth connection between the last note of the shallower register and the following note, normally played over the break, but this time played down the twelfth, that you will need to relax in order for the note to sound down the twelfth. This is the opposite of what you might normally do, get tense. And so, after you've practiced the passage and feel comfortable playing it down the twelfth and listening for and feeling the smooth connection between notes, you now play it with the register key. But here's the thing. You must continue to feel that you are going to play down the twelfth and expect to play down the twelfth. It helps if you pretend that your thumb is an independent person. Every part of you is thinking and feeling that you are going to play down the twelfth as you had been practicing and then your thumb independently presses the register key to bump up the notes and make the passage sound as written. This technique works. I've seen consistent and remarkable results for many students throughout the years. Here's an example now of measures 12 to 50. This is how they sound when played in the manner that I just described. I will attempt to play down the 12th, but my thumb will bump it up. Listen to the smooth connections over the break. I want to give you another suggestion for practicing the technical aspect of this azude. What do you do when you practice slowly and deliberately while using the metronome to bump up your tempo gradually, but find as you reach the faster tempo that you begin to struggle with the licks? especially in certain measures. At this point, it's time to isolate the trouble spots and employ a practice technique called alternating rhythm. Let's use measures 12 to 15 again as an example. If your fingers are not moving automatically and effortlessly between notes, then you've found a wrinkle, and this is good. This means that you have recognized a problem, and here are the tools to deal with it. Let's iron out that wrinkle. Practice this passage by playing all slurred and alternating the rhythm in these five ways. First, swing it, or play the first note long and the second note short. I'll demonstrate slowly. Play the passage in this rhythmic pattern, first slowly, and then bump it up with the metronome until this pattern feels comfortable on your fingers. Next, you reverse the swing rhythm, playing the first note short and second note long. Again, practice this pattern over and over, first slowly, and then bump it up with the metronome until this rhythmic pattern feels comfortable under your fingers. Next, play a triplet pattern. This pattern is tricky for many people at first mostly because the patterns on the page are beamed in groups of four, but stick with it. If it's tricky for you, it means that you found a big wrinkle and that you need to iron it out. After working this pattern up until it's comfortable under your fingers, you now move to the fourth alternating pattern. Two fast, one slow. After practicing the five alternating rhythm patterns, you should then go back to playing this passage straight, as written. If you spent the time practicing to make each of the five alternating rhythmic patterns feel comfortable and smooth, then you will find that when you go back to playing the straight pattern, that it is now much easier. It's amazing, really. There are many passages in this etude where you can employ this practice technique, and you'll find that it works best when it's used to isolate four to five note chunks. It takes a lot of patience to practice this way though, but it really works. Do it. 
Since the etude is asked to be played at or near a suggested tempo marking of quarter equals 120 for your Allstate audition, some of you might be able to play the passage in one breath, though I suspect that only a handful of you might be able to accomplish this without having tension creep into your tone as you're running out of air. Therefore, finding breathing spots is necessary. Rose's book of 32 etudes is actually based on an oboe etude book by Franz Fairling. And although Rose adapted some of Fairling's material, he may not have fully considered adding rests where clarinetists would naturally need to take a breath. Unless you can make it all in one breath, then finding these breathing spots will be necessary. You have a few options. One, you can find a few appropriate spots to take catch breaths. These are quick breaths in between two notes, where you do not have to add too much time to the continuous pulse. I have marked in one good spot in measure six with a red line. Two, you can find a few appropriate spots to leave out a note and breathe instead. This is not ideal, but it is sometimes necessary. I have marked in one possible spot in measure 13 with a red parenthesis around the note to omit. Three, you can find one appropriate spot to stretch time in order to allow for a full breath. I have marked in a good option in measure 11 with a red squiggle mark, and here I will demonstrate starting in measure eight. Before I perform and demonstrate the portion of the etude required for the Allstate clarinet auditions this year, a word about style. There is a slight difference in articulation markings and stylistic and dynamic indications depending on whether you are performing the Rose Etude number no. 6 appearing on page 7 from the original Carl Fisher edition, or the same etude appearing on page 10 in the Carl Fisher revised edition. Both books are acceptable. In order to have success come audition day, be sure to play the notes and technique evenly and accurately. Strive to perform with your best tone always and make your musical ideas come across to the adjudicators. Make them obvious. Notice that there are no dynamic indications at all in this etude, so consider playing with shape in your lines and add them into your part. This will set you apart from your peers. If you are unable to reach the final tempo, quarter equals 120, it's fine to play it slower. I feel that you can play as fast as quarter equals 100 and still play lively. It's more important to play this etude with good tone, musicality, and accurate notes and rhythms than it is to try to reach the quarter equals 120 tempo, but playing it sloppy. Remember though, your performance come audition day is a direct result of how you started at the beginning of your preparation process. Your ability to perform your best in an audition is a direct result of your preparation and practice. It's been a pleasure sharing my thoughts on this etude. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments section below or contact me via email. Also, please feel free to email sound or video files if you'd like me to review them and offer suggestions. I hope to see many of you at the Allstate Band and Orchestra Weekend this year, and even at the various honor bands in our state that use the same etude. Good luck with your auditions. <laughs>